I got that piece of DOM tube that's inch and a quarter ID, but it's just slightly small. So I'm gonna run this inch and a quarter reamer through there just to kind of open it up to size. But because these IDs are not exactly true with the OD, you'll have a little bit of walking with your uh, tool. That's where you can use one of these guys right here. <clears throat> floating, it's a floating chuck, but it's for a Morse taper. All right, and how it works, I believe it's, I believe it's 15 thousandths that it's allowed to float here, if you see this. But it allows the <clears throat> shank of the tool to remain parallel and straight. So it's not bending like that. The whole thing is moving around like that. So once you bring it up in there, the tool can actually follow the outer roundness of the center bore there. We'll go ahead and start her in there. Usually right at the very start, you'll get a little bit of chatter right away. So you gotta make sure you go on in there with it. See like that? Can you see it moving around? So this guy's allowing that tool to, to remain in line with where that bore's at. All right, we'll see if my idea works. This is all, all it is is a sleeve, inch and a quarter bore, and then I turned it. I needed a tube, so that's what this inch and a quarter tube is here, but I needed a tube that I can use to uh, apply leverage. So that will slip down in there like that, and then hopefully that will give me enough leverage to pull and um, bend those inch and a quarter studs just a little bit. So we'll try it and see, but if this doesn't work, we'll have to figure out another way. All right, I'm down here at the new shop and I'm working on the uh, the studs for the jib crane, for the Gorbel jib crane. And I'm trying to get them straightened up, get the threads cleaned up, get the concrete off of them, the rust, and try to get them straightened up so that whenever me and Joe come down here in a couple of days, uh, hopefully it'll be uh, a little uh, less effort to get the the base of it sitting down on the studs so you know they were a little crooked going in and they got a little concrete on them so i'm going to see what i can do about getting these things straightened up i've been working on them got them cleaned up we're, we're using the wire wheel and we've got them cleaned up and what i ended up doing was making a a uh, sleeve that slides down over the studs and i've got this piece of square tubing that i'm using for leverage to just try to uh, manually bend them and it's actually working pretty good right there i started off with uh, a sledgehammer putting a nut on there that wasn't doing anything right there it's put too much shock on it this right here you've got a much better control over your leverage you can well i can come in here and grab this with both of my hands and pull on it like that and it's actually just enough to bend these studs just a little bit we're just trying to do some tweaks on them because they were crooked pointing in, in or out one way or the other. I've still got some more to do. Like I can see that one is actually bent out a little bit. So I'm just gonna try to get them as plumb as I can. Now I did make this pattern there to lay down over this to, to make sure they line up. But the problem is I don't think my pattern is perfect. I don't think I got the center line of the bolt circle perfect on this. And I don't think I can rely on this to actually make sure that those studs are, are lined up right but i laid that out the house and i noticed whenever i went to drill them it, it seemed like that the pilot hole was walking a little bit so i'm not really going to rely on this they're really close but when you lay this down on here i've got at least four of them that seem like they're off quite a bit so i'm going to stop worrying about the pattern and just get all these plumb clean so we can get the nut screwed down on them and i think what we'll have to do is uh, we'll see about getting Joe's uh, welding rig around here when we go to set this column. I'm thinking what we're gonna do is get the torch and maybe open up some of the holes, maybe two to four of the holes, just kind of open them up just a little bit on one side so that they'll clear those studs right there and it'll fit down on there. So that is what we're working on today. And you can also see a little bit more progress on the office here. This is giving you a little better idea of how they 
actually enclose it. So they are putting the plywood on the walls. We've got the uh, panel that's going up right here. I believe this is a 100 amp sub panel that's going up right here. Got our drink fountain, hot water heaters going there, wash tub over there. And then we've also got our, this is gonna be our main panel, 400 amp three phase panel going in right here. I just delivered that today. This is the connection that goes on top of the jib crane. All right, this is gonna be mounted on the top beam. The electrical is gonna be brought in from the top right there. They'll probably go right down that that beam there and it'll drop down and hook into this. And this, what this does, it spins 360 degrees. Yeah, there you go. See, it'll spin, provides the electrical contact that you need right there. So got this over here for the electricians. We've got the uh, specs for the hoist right there. So the guys know um, how to run the proper circuit for that. So that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna to continue working on these studs and try to get them tweaked and get them straight, plumb as much as we can. But I am expecting to maybe have to do a little bit of torching around some of these holes to get them because I just can't tell with my pattern being off a little bit, I have no idea how close they got the studs when they laid these in here for the concrete. So I think it's gonna be a play with it as we go once we try to set this column down on here. Okay, I got these studs about ready for the for the base of the jib crane there. I've got them all as plumb as I can get. So what I decided to do was uh, disregard the pattern that I made. And I'm simply using the measurements off of a tape measure here. So let me grab this and show you what I'm talking about. Get this opened up. So your bolt circle diameter is 36 inches. These are centered uh, four inches center to center, two inches off of the, the center line right there. All right, but if we, if we go across like this and see, I've got every one of these within about a sixteenth of an inch. Some of them are dead on. Some of them are a little bit, a little bit off, maybe about a sixteenth or so. Like that right there. That looks like it's pretty close to 36. All right, so I've done that on all of them. Tweaking them so that the center distance is lining up. I've also gone across them like this to make sure that they are four inch on center. And I'm even going and I'm measuring distances like, you know, I don't know how symmetrical that is, but the distance between this stud, this stud, this stud and this stud, trying to make sure that they're all about the same. So I've got them about as close as I can get them. I think what we may end up having to do if we have problems with the fitment is that we're just gonna end up having to use a torch to uh, widen out one of the holes or a couple of the holes on the base if we need to, to get it to fit down on there. And uh, so that's what we're gonna plan on doing. I've got all of the jam nuts ran down and they're measuring a quarter inch. You know, this is not completely flat. So about a half uh, inch from the base to the top of the nut there. And I'm gonna bring, I forgot to bring my level, but I'm gonna bring a big level down here and try to get all of them level within the same plane as a starting point when we set the column down on here. And then we will start doing our adjustments accordingly to get the, the column plumb all the way around, okay? So that's looking pretty good. And we are just about ready. Joe, come over here and talk to me earlier. We're gonna plan on being down here Friday early get it picked up, bring it around here and see if we can get it set in place. And then the contractor that is actually working on the building here, he is gonna come in after me. He's got the uh, grout gun and he's gonna shoot the grout in there for me. We're gonna be using a, it's a, it's a high strength, non-shrinking grout made for applications like this. And he'll shoot it under there and make sure it's all set. And then once that is properly set with the grout underneath it, that's when you come down and you torque the studs or torque the nuts down on the studs to its final uh, torquing. So that will all, that is gonna come later. I just wanna make sure we get the column set and it ready to go for once I get back. We're, we're gonna, we'll be leaving here pretty soon. Once we get back, we'll finish it out. I wanted to go ahead and give you a shot of the, the jib crane one more time before we get ready to install it, just to catch everybody up to speed on, on what we're setting here. So this is your column, this is your base. So now you can plainly see the uh, bolt pattern that I was trying to get set right there. 
this is half inch plate they've got some uh, some more I believe this is the 5 8 that they welded to the top of it there and they burn the holes inch and a half so we've actually got approximately a half inch of clearance all the way around this bolt circle that that we have to play with all right so my hopes is that it'll just set right down on top of them studs without a bunch of fuss and uh, make the job a little bit easier but we're going to be prepared in case we have to come in here with a torch and just kind of open up whatever we need to just kind of wash out the side of the hole accordingly if we need to to get that to fit in there all right